Warning, the review you are about to watch will contain spoilers wherever necessary for educational or entertaining purposes. Click away now if you don't wish to be spoiled. Hello, my name is the Dyslexic Cosplayer, and you know what? We don't have time to talk about more of this, because this episode's so good, we're just gonna get right into the action. So, Blake and his crew have come to this planet to try and steal an encryption device from the Federation. Their goal is to blow it up and hide the fact they've stolen it in the rubble and the wreckage. This plane goes off more or less without a hitch, except for the fact that they end up leaving Callie behind. And that's when we get into the episode. So it's here we get one of our few reoccurring locations outside of the Liberator. Space Command. And thank you, Mom, for reminding me of that when I forgot. Yes, my mom is more of a nerd than you'll ever be. It's also here we're introduced to Supreme Commander Servalan. Now, it's never entirely clear how the government of the Federation is run, since Supreme Commander Servalan was appointed by the President and, in theory, answers to the President, but is often seen to be doing more actively in the government than the President. Personally, I would not be surprised if this is vaguely a Lenin and Stalin-esque kind of deal, where while Lenin is the one with the power, Stalin is the one that's actually doing stuff in practice. Though Servalon has a lot of power, several agents from the political office are concerned about the Blake affair and are threatening to take action. So Servalon offers to appoint a space commander. He will be exclusively concerned to seek, locate, and destroy Blake. May we know the space commander's name? Yes, you may. It's Space Commander Travis. Supreme Commander, I must object! Travis has committed crimes that not even the Daleks would emulate! Emulate! Hmm, I wonder what this lever does. Whoops! Ah! Now get out. I have to murder baby seals for fur coats. They don't make themselves, you know. Baby seals or fur coats? Yes, now go, before I release the hounds. Later in the episode, we see what a clever manipulator Servalon is, intentionally keeping Travis waiting until he loses all patience, leaving no doubt in anyone's mind who is in charge and that Travis is a brute. We're finally introduced to the villain himself, with a black leather exterior, a damaged face, and a pretty cool blaster hand to replace his lost regular hand. He's just amazing. Travis really is the best antagonist. Notice I say Travis not Travish. We'll get into that in Season 2. Travis despises Blake on a personal level. Likewise, Blake seems more horrified by the news once it's decrypted than leaving Callie behind. But that's not surprising, since Blake was fairly certain he had killed Travis. And we see why Travis was a good choice. Seeing through the fact that this operation seems almost intentionally sloppy, he demands they look for anything that might be missing, cataloging each piece of the wreckage which is a monumental task, to say the least. That could take months, sir, if it's possible at all. Frell, if I were you, I would make it possible. We shall double our efforts. For your sake, Krell, I suggest you do. The Supreme Commander is not so forgiving as I am. Yeah, I know I made this joke before, but it was just too good not to re-include. One of the other things they find in the wreckage is Callie, who's probably been unconscious for several days. From what I've learned from Archer, that's that's not good for you. Well, she sent off to Space Command to be tortured because, of course. And between Blake explaining his relationship to Travis with his crew, and Travis explaining his relationship to Blake with Servalon, we're pretty well filled in on where this comes from. Blake and some of his resistance buddies were meeting with several other cells to make a big plan. They had scoped out the location of the meeting for almost two days to make sure it was safe. However, when everyone showed up, they found out that Travis had been waiting for three days and hiding inside of the building to ambush them. Now that is commitment. Travis ordered the wholesale execution of them without trial. Blake managed to run away, get a hold of a gun, and shot Travis. Blake was sure he had killed Travis, but seemingly only managed to destroy Travis's eye and one of his hands. I'm not entirely sure how that shot works, but okay. Meanwhile, Travis's hunch pays off, as it turns out there's damage around some of the parts that wouldn't be there if several of the components were still in place. So with a little bit of deductive reasoning, they're able to work out that Blake stole part of the decryption system and is now able to read all of their messages. 
Travis and Servalon are both concerned, but it's also here we see again what a tactical genius Travis is capable of being. Servalon wants to begin re-encrypting everything so that Blake can't read it, but Travis recognizes this is the perfect way to lure Blake into a trap, thinking they still don't know. And the plan seems to go off hook, line, and sinker, as Blake rushes off back to the planet where they stole the encryption device from, having learned that Callie is still alive. Meanwhile, Travis has spent several days rushing a whole unit of stormtroopers out to the planet, as well as making sure that their satellite system is repaired so they can detect when the Liberator enters the system almost at once, and enjoys gloating to Callie about how she's going to be perfect bait to destroy Blake. And that's when Travis gets the signal that the Liberator has entered the system. Only to find out that Blake had already been dropped off several days before Travis showed up and has been waiting to spring a trap on Travis using the same trick that Travis had previously used on Blake, and the Liberator's coming to pick both of them up. Despite Travis's best effort to use his secret concealed gun to kill Blake, it doesn't quite work out as well as he had planned, and Blake gets away, with Travis left to nurse his broken hand and plot his destruction of the great white whale that is Blake. And that's the end of the episode. Now, yes, I've said previously I think this episode is basically flawless, but let's still talk about what works, what doesn't work, and what changes I might have made. First off, what works. So, introducing Travis and Servalon was a brilliant idea. It gives a human face to an inhuman bureaucracy that is the Federation. Servalon being a seductive femme fatale that's able to keep people enthralled with her brilliance as much as her beauty, while also manipulating every single one of them the whole while. Meanwhile, while Travis is a butcher who's committed enough crimes that his career should have been over by now, commands a great deal of respect from his own men. Presumably because, unlike most of the officers they're forced to deal with, Travis rose through the ranks on merit rather than on political influence, which they're probably used to. And judging by how he creepily stares at some of Gareth Thomas's artsier headshots, that hatred runs bone deep for Blake. The best way to describe Travis's character is a mailed fist wrapped in a velvet glove. Brutal and destructive, but capable of quiet cunning demonstrating that cunning with his ability to read Blake's mind and figure out his ultimate goals despite the obviousness of his plans. Though personally I put some of that down to the fact that Blake is as easy to read as neon orange letterprint on neon green paper. I mean, he's pretty obvious and predictable throughout most of the series, sadly. But using Travis's own ambush tactics against him shows that Blake is equally capable of being devious and using his tactics, despite loathing and holding a great contempt for everything the Federation stands for throughout the series. And, unlike a lot of other franchises, we get a really good example in their first encounter of why Blake doesn't just kill Travis. You'd better kill me, Blake, until one of us is dead. There'll never be a time when I won't be right behind you. If not you, then somebody else. Killing you will change nothing. You don't matter enough to kill Travis. Despite how this might normally make Travis seem like less of a threat, it still is very clear that he is a good antagonist for Blake, with Servalon standing in the wings pulling all of the strings. So that generally covers the better aspects of the episode. Let's talk about some of the weaker elements. The beginning where they're planting the explosives around the Federation communication station while essential for the episode, definitely feels like it was overly padded. There's just not quite enough stuff that happens here to justify how much of the episode it takes up, when that time could have been better served fleshing out Travis's relationship to Blake, or how Servalon's relationship to the Federation works, since it's kind of hand-waved for the most part. Likewise, the threatening and torturing of Callie toward the latter half of the episode is a little unnecessary and just kind of squicky on a certain level, especially since Callie for the most part is generally written to be a strong and powerful character, so seeing her in this position just, just kind of feels weird and I'm not quite sure what we were going for other than cementing just how evil Travis is early on. So what would I change about the episode? Honestly, I can't think of a whole lot. Besides some minor rewrites, I think this episode largely stands on its own and is quite frankly one of my favorite episodes of the series. So, that's the review. I hope you found it informative, educational, and above all, entertaining. Next week, we move on to our next episode, 
And, uh, what can we expect? Well, I thoroughly predict this is going to be the shortest episode I've done so far, because Mission to Destiny was always destined to drive me to murder. I'll hope to see you all then, friends. Until next time. Hey friends, I hope you enjoyed the review almost as much as I enjoyed making it. Now, if you would like to show your support, by all means, leave the video a like, maybe a comment. If you want to go really crazy, try hitting that bell icon down below so you can stay informed of all my new content. As you can see, I'm coming out with a bunch of new videos. I'm also going to be hopefully doing more cosplay tutorials. If you'd like to show some more support in a more substantial way, try heading on over to my Patreon or my Facebook. Both will be links down below.